Yeah, year on, still can't do an intro. So, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, or hello, I am Misha Grimes and today I'm gonna do a video that is all over YouTube and that is the best of beauty 2017. Because yes, we are now in 2018, even though that really hasn't sunk in and doesn't seem like it's a new year for me, but we'll go with it. Now, I want to start doing a lot more makeup content on my channel, because I know that's what you guys want to see. So I thought I'd like delve into the side of things with my favourite beauty products of 2017. Now, if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll probably hear these products being mentioned, but maybe I didn't say what shade, or I didn't say this about them, that about them, who even knows? So I'm gonna go into detail of my favorite blusher, my favorite bronzer, my favorite foundation, like all that malarkey. The occasional one, there is two of them, but like, sorry, but I'm a girl, I can't decide. Like, you just want everything. So, yes. We're gonna get a wiggle on. I've got a variety of pieces. I've also thrown in some like extra little weird bits in there that aren't necessarily makeup, but are like beauty related. Of course it can be, Misha, it's best of beauty. A day. Okay, I'm losing my marbles. Let's roll on with this video. Also this thing, knitted thing that I'm wearing is actually a jumper dress from Primark and it was seven pounds. So, yes, how insane. First things first. Oh, also, I feel like I should mention that I basically don't wear makeup that often. Majority of the time I'm without makeup or I'm in like a natural makeup like I have right now. Like I would call this pretty natural because I don't actually have any foundation on. Now you may be thinking, how does she not have any foundation on and be looking so like bronzed? You're gonna have to watch this video to find out. But yeah, so I have eyelash extensions so I don't really need to like put on a lot of makeup on a daily basis, I just don't really care anyway. So these are like a normal person's makeup items. Cause you know you watch all those channels where they use like all these electric purple eyeshadows and you're like, oh my gosh, that's insane. But then you're like, when would a normal person, like an everyday look, I mean, feel free to wanna wear purple eyeshadow on your everyday look, but you wouldn't typically wear that for the everyday person. So my makeup videos would be more like your normal everyday makeup look, or like if you're going for a little special uh, occasion, because I did do my makeup on New Year's Eve, image inserted here, in a slightly more jazzy way. I used to love electric green turquoisey eyeshadow so I went back to that but when I was doing it I found it really stressful because I was using grey toned eyeshadows and I never use cool toned and I felt like it wasn't blending but I was happy with the look in the end so yes maybe I'll do that as a tutorial in the months to come but I'm going to shut up and again with this video so I don't know if there's a certain order that I have to start from like um do I start with like primer do I go for that yeah I feel like that's at the base of your makeup. So my ultimate favorite primer is the Makeup Forever Step One Skin Equalizer. Now this is a smoothing primer. And I'm not necessarily someone that has big open pores. Like I don't, that's not really something that I suffer with, but I love this primer because it makes my face feel as smooth as a baby's butt. And I have like a bit of texture around my nose where I get like blackheads and on my forehead and on my chin. So that is where I use this. I don't use this all over my face because I don't really feel like there's anything to smooth on like my cheeks. But, oh, I'm dropping it. But as we can see, I'm like desperately running out of this. So I really need to buy a new one, but they are like 32 pounds, I think, which is quite expensive. Maybe it's a little bit less. But still, I will obviously link all the products down below so you can go and check them out. And I'll also mention like shades and everything like that that I talk about down below. I also like the fact that I put it all in like a little pink cute box. Oh, that's quite jazzy. Next up, so I'm going to move on to the item that I'm wearing right now instead of foundation. Now, this is the By Terry Cellular Brightening CC Serum. Now, this bad boy is like £60, maybe like £63. Yeah. That's expensive. Very, very expensive. And I bought this because, yes, Lydia Elise Millen uses it and I love her and I wanted to try it out. And I actually bought this for mum for Christmas. You may have seen it in my Christmas haul video. So maybe like, how are you using it as your best 2017? Because 
genuinely, the moment this came into my life, or my mum's life, and then mum wasn't a massive fan, so she gave it to me. Whoops, accidentally gifted myself a gift, but it's so amazing, I don't really mind. Um, and I know that I'm completely wholeheartedly in love with it, and it's going to be my best of 17, my best of 2018, my best of 2019, 2020, like, yeah. So this is in the shade Sunny Flash, and it's quite literally a light diffuser youth enhancer. It says shake before use. I never shake it. And I mean, I just think, you know those days where you don't want to put foundation on, but you still want to look like you have really nice glowy, bronzy skin? That is when this is perfect. And I'm not one to normally fake tan my face. So this makes my face match my body, which is amazing because it does look a bit strange when you've got no makeup on your face and you've got fake tan on your body and you've got like this stark white face and then this brown body. So that's kind of how it works. And it just makes your skin look so glowy and radiant and it is hella expensive. I do think it's worth it, but I'm thinking about your bucks. So I thought I would also show a similar item but a little bit different from MUA. Now these are the Light Luster Liquid Highlight Drops. And this is in the shade Marvel. Now there's three shades, I think, and Marvel is my favourite. It's the most, like, goldeny, but not too golden. Now, this doesn't necessarily work in the same way that you can use it all over your face. I use this literally all over my face. I, like, base my face in it and probably spend about £5 with each application, but we'll go with it. Whereas this, I mix into a foundation or I use it as the high points of my face. So it's not the same product. Apologies if the angle has just changed, but my camera decided to cut out. So foundation wise, now this foundation is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation, which is a mouthful and a half. And if I'm wearing foundation, it is most probably this one. It is a little bit more expensive as you don't get as much product for the fact it's a stick, so obviously you don't get as much as you get with a liquid. But it's such a flawless and like beautiful finish. Whenever I do someone's makeup, I can like see it like gliding on and like just magically transforming the skin in front of my eyes. I don't notice it when I'm doing my own because I'm just like not really paying attention. But say I'm doing Chloe's makeup, I can just like see the magic and I'm like, oh my gosh, this foundation is incredible. Now this is shade Y415, which I think is a more yellow undertone shade because I am a yellow gal. I've always got cold Homer Simpson. Can't change it. So, my neutral shade is Y415, like when I'm not pale but not ultra tanned. And then I also have Y365 for when I'm more pale and Y445 for when I'm more tanned. I think I have to say if there's one thing that you buy from this video, let it be this foundation because it will change your foundation life. Here we go. Now this will be no surprise that I am choosing the Maybelline Instant Anti-Age The Eraser Eye Concealer because I basically don't use any other concealer under the eye. It is my ultimate favourite and it's literally like £6, which is a great price if you compare it to the likes of NARS or Urban Decay. They charge like £20. So I have this in the shoot, shoot, shade neutraliser, but my favourite shade is Nude, which I've just run out of. You can tell it's come to the end of the year because I need to like replenish all my makeup supplies. But I absolutely love this foundation, foundation, this concealer. It gives such a smooth and brightened under eye. I'm most definitely not into the stark white under eye like I used to be, and that is why Nude is my favorite shade, because it probably is actually the same shade as my skin tone. And I mean, I think you can tell now, like I just go for more of like a natural, I've slept like eight hours rather than white, I've slept for 24 and I've like really, or no, white, I've slept for two hours and I'm really trying to cover it because I feel like it highlights it more but it's a really good drugstore piece that has a great price great finish better than designer designer concealers high-end yeah my favorite for sure now to apply all of the above items I would always turn it to my dirty whoopsies beauty blender now I know beauty blenders are something that's been talked about for about all of eternity but 
I don't do my makeup without a beauty blender, so I couldn't do my best of 2017 without mentioning a beauty blender. Because I know you're all fed up and sick of hearing it, but they are amazing. Also, I know people say that the Real Technique ones are as good, but I don't like the Real Techniques ones. I think if you've just had a Real Techniques ones and you haven't necessarily loved it, and you've been like, oh, I'm not massively into makeup sponges, I would try the Beauty Blender. I know they're expensive, but you do keep them for a long time, so it's kind of worth the price, and yes, I need to clean mine, I'm very sorry. Ow. I am not particularly a very greasy person, I have quite dry skin, but if I'm going to powder, I would just do like under my eyes here and maybe a little bit on my chin. And I would of course use the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. Now again, this is an item that everyone goes on about, but I'm not that person to have like 70 of each thing and like be trying out something new. Once I find something that fully works for me, like I am going to stick with it. I've been using this powder for probably about two years now. Chloe, my best friend, recently bought the RMC. A RMCA? RMCA? I think that's it. RMCA powder, which is like the really big tub and it's like seven pounds and there's so much in there. The application process is a bit of a nightmare because there's no like sifter, but it's a really good powder as well. So if you don't want to spend your big bucks on the Laura Mercier one, I would check out the RMCA one. But again, when I use this, I can see the difference of like the smoothing effect that it has, which I haven't seen with any other powder. Sticking with powder products, it's going to be no surprise that my favourite bronzer is the only bronzer that I ever use, even though I do actually have a few others. And it's well loved. And again, it's dying. And it's the Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light Ambient Lighting Bronzer. That was a mouthful. It's a big name. This bronzer is honestly the best bronzer on the planet. Someone, please try and prove me wrong, but I absolutely am in love with this bronzer. I think when you look at the pan, it doesn't look that dark. Like on the website, it looks really light, but I can use this when I'm pale and it's the right color and I can use this when I'm tanned. It genuinely suits all skin tones that I've tried on at least. And everyone that I've used this bronzer on or anyone that I've recommended to, they have bought it, they have loved it and like, I'm sorry, again, it's an expensive item. I feel like with my makeup collection, I really go for really inexpensive items from the drugstore, or I go for more high-end items. But makeup does last a long time, and you would hope, if these items were a little bit more expensive, that the ingredients in them aren't too damaging to your skin. Like, you'd hope you're putting something good for your skin on your skin, considering you wear it for quite a period of time. Let's hope. Now, blush. Blush is one that I couldn't pick just one of because I do have quite a few blushes and yeah. So the first one up is the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick Compact. Now this is again a very well loved item. This item is probably about three or four years old and I mean there's still loads in there because it just doesn't seem to disappear. It's probably gone off but does makeup really actually go off? Like, after someone's had something for 12 months, do they really put it in the bin if they've still got loads left? Like, that is a waste of money. And of course, this is Bobbi Brown, so it was a little bit more of a pricey blusher, but it just, it's like the perfect natural flush on your cheeks. So many people nowadays, like so many people my age, when they do their makeup, they don't use blusher, they just use bronzer and highlight, and I'm like, no, no. We need the Napoleon ice cream. So I think if you're easing into using blusher and you don't want to go for like full on big fat red rosy cheeks, then this is a really good one to use. I always thought Bobbi Brown was quite an old grandma brand, but I do take it back because they have some great products. And then the second choice is this Tarte blusher. Now I got this as a little freebie from Sephora when I was in America. And this is in the shade Party or Party. Don't know if I'm trying to do an American accent, which I'm shocking at. So this is again quite like a light, gentle flush of blush. You can obviously build it up, but I do think it suits a lot of skin tones. It's kind of like a cool toned blusher, which I didn't think I would like, but it's really beautiful. And also when it doubles as a eyeshadow, it's basically half the price, looks stunning absolutely beautiful. It's a matte finish which is obviously very different to the Bobbi Brown one because this is definitely a shimmer brick as it's called. Oh and I forgot to mention this is in the shade Nectar. They have quite a few but I think this one is my favourite and I mean Tarte blushes they have a million and one shades but I really like the shade Party. 
Now, moving on to highlight. This was a struggle to choose, and I'm kind of annoyed with my choice, because A, it's such an obvious choice, B, it's so 2016, but it is a really good highlighter. Now, of course, it's Champagne Pop by Becca and Jaclyn Hill. Pet peeve, we ready for this. Chloe opened this the other day and I nearly cried. Yep. Mine has done what everybody else's has done and smashed! Woohoo! But I'm still using it. Chloe opened it the other day and didn't realise it was smashed. And she literally opened it and it flew out everywhere. And she like literally caught it in between her legs. But it was fine. So the reason I'm annoyed about choosing this, blu this blush, this highlight, is because I know it's such an obvious choice. But I love other highlights when I mix them, whereas this is the only highlight I will use by itself. So if I was gonna say to buy one highlight, it would be this one. So sorry for such a basic chick choice, but I can't help it, it is an amazing highlight. Just please create a formula that doesn't smash. You feel my pain. Eyeshadow. Now, I am less into eyeshadow than I have been in previous years. I just feel like it's a lot of effort, and I kind of just normally chuck a like matte shade across my eye and go with it. But if I am doing eyeshadow, I'm using my well-loved and well-destroyed Huda Beauty Eyeshadow Palette. Now this is the first one, so it's the Rose Gold Edition, and it's got like the textured eyeshadows in it. Now we can probably see that I haven't actually used that much of the foiled textured eyeshadows. I love them, but because I have my eyelash extensions, when I use glittery eyeshadows like this, they get stuck to all their eyelashes. So I did that the other day for New Year's Eve and I've still got like bright green glitter stuck in my eyelashes and I can't get it out without ripping out my eyelashes. So I do use those for a special occasion, but otherwise these mattes are just my go-to because there's some cool tones, there's some warm tones, there's pinks, there's oranges, there's a black, there's a dark brown. Like, they're just beautiful eyeshadows. The fallout isn't that bad. I'm not that turned off by fallout in an eyeshadow. Because if I'm doing a dramatic look, I will always do my eyeshadow first. But, I mean, they're beautiful eyeshadows. I really want to try the latest palette. But, I mean, they do look quite similar. And these are expensive. Again, sorry guys. I got expensive taste with makeup, I can't really help it. Wearing a little juxtaposition there, I don't know if that's the correct term, but I will anyway. A non-expensive item that I love to use is the NYX Brow Gel. Now mine's in the shade, sorry, it's a tinted brow mascara. Mine's in the shade Brunette. Now obviously I am blonde, but I don't think my eyebrows look too dark. I don't like incredibly dark eyebrows, so I think this is like the right amount of dark, because naturally I do have darker eyebrows than hair if you get what I mean. So, this is just like an easy hack to eyebrows. I've got it on today, and I feel like my eyebrows look a reasonably on fleek. You literally just pull this out and go like that. And it's that quick and easy. Like, it literally takes 0 0.3 seconds. I barely ever pencil in or draw in my eyebrows nowadays. Maybe if it's a special occasion. But otherwise, I'm all for the NYX brow gel. And this is literally like £7. So I do like some inexpensive makeup items. Sticking with a more inexpensive item. Now, I should probably do this item last because it's setting spray. But, you know, live life by your own rules. This isn't the packaging that it obviously comes in. This is just a little bottle that I've transported it in, transported it? Transferred it into because A, it was running out and B, I was traveling. So this is the Mario Badescu setting spray in the rose flavor, scent, shade. I don't even know. This setting spray is seven pounds. Now, I'm not someone that really notices a massive difference when I use high-end or more inexpensive setting sprays. I just think they kind of all did the same thing. So, if I had to pick one to use for the rest of eternity, it would be the Mario Badescu one because it just feels like it really hydrates my skin. I kind of use them as primers and setting sprays and whenever I just feel like my makeup's looking a bit drab, I'll just spray some on and it'll kind of give it a bit more life. Also, if I've previously put makeup on earlier on in the day and I want to touch up, to like give my skin some more like wetness, I know that sounds really wrong, to work with. So I want to put in a bit more foundation, I'll just spray this on and start like buffing products in and I feel like it makes it go on a lot more smooth rather than like a second layer of cake, if you get me. Now I'm going to go back to eyes and I'm going to go to liners. 
So I've got three liners here, but they are all used for different things. So it's fine. We go with it. This is the NARS Black Valley Pot Eye. Is it an eye paint? Eye paint. Now I've had this for years and there's still a lot in there. It is quite dried out, but it's definitely not as dried out as the MAC one. I really don't like the MAC pot gel liner because I just think it like just shrivels up and it's like an old woman. It's not very good. But I use this to fill in my waterline when I'm going for a really dramatic smoky look. And I do love when I do that because I don't do it very often. I feel like it makes a really like va va voom. And then also I'm not massively into winged liner as you guys will know. Maybe I'll try it out a little bit more in 2018. But if I'm doing a nighttime look, I don't want to necessarily line my eyes, but I will put some of this gel pot just on like the inner third, just to meet up with my lashes. Just so it doesn't look like I've got a weird little white patch. Then, another eyeliner I use for my waterline, or just to like colour in a little bit, is the Marc Jacobs Black Liner. Don't know the shade, because this is a mini, and it's kind of destroyed and used loads of. But I'm sure there are better black liners than the Marc Jacobs one. This is just the one that I have and I do really like. But I can imagine that this is quite expensive. Now, this is a brown liner. Now, I'm not necessarily someone to use a brown liner on their eyes. This is actually for me to fill in my moulds. So, all the moulds on my face are my own. I'm not trying to come up with a spot. But when I do foundation, I do bronzer, I do highlighter, I do blusher, like they do get covered up and I never used to do this. I've only started doing this this year because I'd always forget, but now I pencil back in my moles and that is when the Maribidescu spray comes into play. So I've done all my foundation, I've done my bronzer, I've done all my skin makeup, I'll spray the spray, then I'll grab the pencil and I'll pencil them in because otherwise if I don't do that, this is a little bit dry and it kind of doesn't come out like a creamy formula or come out patchy but this is the Maybelline Line Refine Expression Cajul, Cajul, I don't even know how to say that and this is in 38 brown so it is an eyeliner you could use it on your eyes it is waterproof but I use it to draw in my moles. Sticking with inexpensive and eyes we've got my ultimate favourite mascara of all time now this is the Maybelline the Colossal Volume Express Cat Eyes Mascara. Now you'd think a cat eyes mascara would not necessarily be something that I would go for I would never think like oh yeah I want cat eye mascara so, I actually used this once because my sister had it and then I just fell in love with it and I didn't end up repurchasing things like the Benefit Better Than Sex mascara or there's a really good Makeup Forever mascara as well. But this one trumps all of them and it's literally £7. So I thought, let's be smart, this is my favourite mascara, there's no point in repurchasing expensive mascaras that do the exact same thing. So yes, this is an absolute bargain, really, really good. I'm probably running out. Oh no, actually, I've had this for quite a while. Mascara is probably something that you should throw out more often, but I feel like I'll just use this until it's used up. If I got a style or something like that, I would definitely chuck it, but touch wood, I'm fine. Let's hope. We're gonna stick with lashes, and I am gonna mention these lashes, which I wore on the New Year's Eve, where I posted the photo in the makeup, the turquoise eyes. Now these are the Eldora, Eldora M108 lashes and I don't know if you can see, they are like a really fluffy lash. Now, I obviously have eyelash extensions, so I never wear fake eyelashes, but I did on New Year's Eve, and I have previous times, because when my lashes are coming to like the three week stage and I need infills, I'll pop on a good pair, and it just gives me like that vavoom. Because when you've got big banging eyeshadow, you don't want like little pathetic natural lashes. Like you want some drama. That's the word I was looking for. And these are my favorite, M108. Final makeup items are lips. Now, lips are really hard for me to choose. And I actually just realized I want to mention another lipstick. These are my little makeup drawers. I've got some of my makeup in here and this one down here. I do have a makeup collection video actually on my channel, which I will link down below. But I'm typically a nude lipstick wearer and the set I will go for, the set, the trio I will go for is the Sephora lip liner in O2 Nothing But Nude. This is a gel lip liner, it's my favourite lip liner, the formula is great, they have a million and one shades. Yes, amazing, favourite lip liner, it's like £12 so it's not too expensive but it's not 
that cheap, if you know what I mean. If you compare it to some lip liners, it's quite inexpensive. Then, the... I've just realised I want to mention another lipstick as well. Okay, so, now, over the top of that, I will either use the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in Stockholm, which is just a beautiful nude. I've got it on right now. It's like one of those... Yeah, it's like a creamy, it is quite matte, so I will put a gloss on top, but I can even not use a lip liner and just go straight in with this, and it kind of does the exact same thing. Then, if I'm not using that, then I will turn to this lipstick. This is probably my favourite nude lipstick of this year, and this is the NARS Audacious Lipstick in Julie. Now, Julie is like a pinky nude. It's a little bit more pink than nude, but it's not so pink that it's in your face. Like I'm not a massive bright lipstick wearer, and it's just such a beautiful color. The NARS Audacious lipsticks are an incredible, incredible consistency, and they're not matte, they're like a dewy finish. Can I have a dewy lipstick? I will anyway. But yeah, they're my, that's probably my favorite lipstick of a nude. And then this lip gloss, is actually, oh, I just dropped some on me, is actually from Makeup by Sheila. So Makeup by Sheila did my makeup when I competed at the Galaxy pageant, and she gave me this lip gloss, and it's my favourite. I'll try and find it down below. It's in the shade Nude Plum, but it's honestly such a beautiful lip gloss, and I have it on right now. I then realised that I wanted to mention this little Charlotte Tilbury Kissing Lipstick Kit. The shade that I wanted to discuss, I can't fine where is it it's called Karina's love now this is like a, a pinky red now you will have seen a million one photos of me wearing red lipstick this winter and it would have been this shade it's just absolutely beautiful and it actually matches my nails perfectly it is a little bit more of a wearable red because it has got that pinky undertone so if you're into like your dark deep red this probably isn't the lipstick for you but i just think it's such a beautiful lipstick obviously charlotte tilbury are an expensive brand so i'm very glad i have the mini this will last me a lifetime they are an amazing formula like they're so creamy and so beautiful basically anything from love and tan i recommend their mitts are amazing they're just fabulous and i would definitely check them out in 2018 if you've never tried them because your tanning life will be changed oh they also have like this really good scrubbing mitt that i use to scrub myself over there and i was taking off my old tan kind of did injure myself because i was scrubbing myself that hard but that was my own fault the mitt did a great job now another item that i want to mention is body blur now this is by vita liberate luxury tan and i remember carly bible has actually spoken about this and i'd actually been using it before She'd sp spoken about it, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's actually somebody else out there who uses it, because I'd never seen anyone use it. Now, this is quite expensive. It's like £24 for the tub, and this is in the shade Medium, and it's not like a fake tan. It's like a body makeup. So when I'm competing in pageants or when I'm necessarily going on a night out or somewhere fancy, I will put this on my body. It is beautiful it makes you look like j-lo like absolute j-lo it makes your skin look so radiant and it's not like thick and heavy but it's like a dewy oh it's kind of like the by terry serum but for your body like i would describe there's a similar sort of effect but i wouldn't recommend to use this when wearing white or kind of like when you're going to be rubbing against things because this does come off I don't know what to do to make it not come off like we blow dry my body and all like we fully try and dry it but it just it just does come off but it's kind of worth it because it looks so beautiful next random item is a hairbrush now we all need hairbrushes and sorry that this has some hair in it but I feel like Hairs are impossible to get out of hairbrushes. Now this is the wet brush. It's in this gorgeous purple sparkly and I just love it. It's really great because I have extensions for like not completely destroying the bonds. Like it glides through them, it doesn't get caught because it's got these like plastic hair bristles. I use it for both when I've got wet hair and when I've got dry hair and it works a treat both times. So I think this is a great hairbrush to invest in because I feel like we need to take better care of our hairbrushes. I think hairbrushes is the thing that people just pick up like really cheap ones but if you've got a really cheap hairbrush and you're like pulling out your hair with it then I'd invest 
This is still only like seven or eight pounds, so it's quite good. Now, obviously when I put on makeup, I need to take it off. Now, as well as using the, what is it, the Simple BB, no, no. So I either use the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water, which again, everyone goes on about, but it is brilliant. I use this to take off my makeup. I know Chloe uses it once she's taken off her makeup to like cleanse her skin. But I just use this with cotton rounds, swipey swipey, it's fabulous, easy breezy, really quick. But if I'm being lazy, then I will turn to makeup wipes. I don't use them very often. I more use them when I'm applying makeup to like wipe my hands or like clean up a little bit of something, something. And these are the only ones that I actually like, apart from Chloe has some from number seven that are literally like seven pounds from the pack. But because she works at Boots, she gets them on like discount. But they're so smooth. They're like wiping silk on your skin. But who actually pays seven pounds for makeup wipes? Like that's ridiculous. These are like a couple of pounds, maybe like two or three pounds. I normally get them for buy one, get the other one for free. And they're from Sensitive and they're Sensitive from Superdrug and they're the Be Pure Sensitive Micellar Cleansing Wipes for sensitive skin hypoallergenic. I do have incredibly sensitive skin. So if I use weird products or like even if I use these simple makeup wipes, my skin burns and I don't know why. So these are perfect for the sensitive skin person among us. Next, now I wanted to recruit back on something I asked on my Instagram story. So I asked you all what scrub you would recommend, what exfoliator. Now a lot of people actually said you shouldn't use exfoliator because it's really bad for your skin. But if I've got dead skin scale skin scales, dead skin cells on my skin and like a gritty nose full of loads of blackheads. I'm going to use an exfoliator. I'm sorry if I'm peeling away my skin layers, but I'm sure there's plenty more back up. So this is the St. Ives Fresh Skin Apricot Scrub, and this was the most recommended one. It's like five pounds in Superdrug, and I've been using it for like a month now, and it's life. Like, it's so much better than the last exfoliator I had, and that's why I'm including it in my best 2017 products, because although I've only been using it for a month, it's amazing and it's like a it is a gritty formula I don't know if you can see but it's not like super gritty that you're injuring yourself my skin has been really good since I've been using it I do have a spot up here but that's nothing to do with that that's just called hormones um, and yeah inexpensive really great item it smells insane I am in love now I am someone that uses a little buffing sponge as Primark likes to call them with the exfoliator so originally I used to get my buffing sponges from body shop but they are like maybe like four or five pounds whereas these ones for Primark are two for a pound how good is that they obviously don't last as long but you get two in there so they're 50p each and they still last like long enough so as you can see, it's kind of like, it's not mega gritty, like you're not going to injure yourself. So I dampen that, put a little bit of my exfoliator on, and I only exfoliate around my nose, on my forehead and on my chin. I don't touch any of this area because I, don't, I have no need to exfoliate that area. So yes, these are great, so handy. Once they've got really, really grossy, you can just chuck them in the bin. They're also really good for getting rid of like awkward bits of fake tan. So I do have one that looks a little bit worse for wear upstairs in my shower, but we don't need to hear about that. Another product that is well used and I'm literally like scraping out the edges. I need to cut it open and like fully, yeah. This is the Coco Smile Activated Charcoal Advanced Whitening Toothpaste and it's fluoride free and people always comment about my teeth being white. Now I used to use a blue toothpaste from I think it was Blanks but that one was full of loads of chemicals and I actually think this one is a lot better. So it's one of those charcoal toothpastes that are a little bit like blacky brown which is kind of off-putting but it doesn't taste bad so do not worry. I do think this has really, really stepped up my teeth whitening game. I would normally have to whiten my teeth with my Smile Brilliant gels and my liners more often than I have since using this Coco Smile. I've been doing it a lot less often and I just think this is maintaining the whitening that I did months prior. I need to pick up some more of it. It's great. It's natural ingredients. It's really good for you. And I dropped it. Final item is 
this bobble now i remember when these were so like cool and everyone had them and i never really got it and it's one of those invisible bobbles i have a few of them like lying around the house and these actually really work like they fully would you know that i've had a hairband in my hair and also would you know that my hair is actually when did when did i wash my hair last so when i was at the hairdressers which was on thursday today it's Thursday. It's been a week since I've washed my hair. I don't think it looks greasy. Can we appreciate? Like, that is impressive. I've obviously just had bleach highlights put in my hair, so that like, will have dried it out. But anyway, I wasn't talking about my hair. If you want to know about my hair, check out Gemma at Anthony Green Salon. I will link her down below. She does my hair. She's amazing. I love her. Yes, check her out. But back to the bobble. It genuinely doesn't give you any kinks in your hair. The only thing I find annoying is that when you first get them, they're like a little springy, aren't they? No, what's that called? Not springy. Uh, you used to play with them when you were little. Is it a springy? I think it is a springy. Basically, it was like that big when I first got it. But over time, they like really do stretch, which isn't really an issue because I just wrap it more times, but it is a little bit annoying. So just to bear in mind, but that wraps up everything that I have loved beauty wise in 2017. Let me know what makeup content you guys would like to see. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and let me know if you love any of these products or if you're going to be trying any of them out. Also another little mention on my nails, please ignore this one, I'm due in tomorrow but this has definitely been my favourite nail shade of 28, 2017. I can tell you that because I had it done twice. Now, I normally get my nails done one shade, move on to the next. One shade, move on to the next. I kept this Wildfire by CND twice. So, Wild and Red Nails, you lasted about two months. But tomorrow, I'm actually thinking of getting black nails and then going back to this red shade for when I go to Paris. But you guys don't need to know that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys all next time. Toodaloo. Bye.